Hi everyone, I'm Josh, and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful new microphone. This is a Neumann TM-103, very expensive microphone, but I'm all about reinvesting to make these videos even better for you. Um, inside the piano, we've got two AKG 414 microphones. That's usually what I used to record, just my voice, and then I would just let the piano kind of filter into the mic. We have two dedicated microphones now, to just miking up the piano, and then one for my voice so you can hear that. So you'll get the true stereo sound in, in the piano, and but also have a dedicated mic for my voice, because I know a lot of you have said you've had a hard time hearing me in these tutorials, um, especially when we're talking, I tend to talk pretty fast. So uh, today's episode is about a new way of thinking of the arpeggios in Chopin Etude Opus 25, number 12, often called the Ocean Etude in C minor. And I have a student who I've mentioned before on this channel, Adi, who's a very fine young pianist, uh, 14 or 15 years old, and he is playing this. He's played a couple of Chopin etudes up to this point. And the way I used to explain it was all about uh, how the hand can act like a squid. So a lot of students, the trap that I see most students fall into is obviously having too much tension, and they end up doing something like this. They'll rush the first part of that, and then they'll jump. So they'll kind of get this ugly, clumpy sound that's not clear. Now, a lot of students will release their fingers as a remedy to that, which is good. Uh, you want to activate the fingers, but they'll... They haven't resolved the underlying issue, which is uh, a loose how to loosen up the hand. So one of the ways I used to explain to my students is, uh, you know, think of your hand as a squid. So each of the hand naturally comes in and... Don't think of any bones in the hand. That's something Babayan used to always say is no bones in the hand. Um, and, and that seemed to really help a lot of students. Uh, but another thing that you want to, um, that I probably have not explained on this channel, is about the rotation of those arpeggios. One thing that I would recommend doing that seemed to help Adi a lot um, and has been um, helpful for students I've taught uh, for the last little while is if you think of that kind of doorknob turning rotation and then rotating back to the thumb this kind of goes back to that video I posted recently about scales about turning back um, so that the hand is in the natural motion of the arpeggio that's at hand not including the crosses what I mean by that how would the hand naturally play this it would rotate to the left and then back up to the right rotate to the left so along with that squid analysis, think of just the hand turning, and the hand is relaxed in this position, and then it just turns back to that note. Coming down would be just the opposite. Rather than just thinking, hey, I've got to pull my hand in right here, that can get a little tight, and you notice I'm a little bit um, tense right there. Whereas if I just allow the hand, to rock to the left, and then I bring it here so that it's in a nice natural position for that next arpeggio. So I'm gonna rotate to the left, to the left, and then I'm going to rotate to the right, to the right. That really... say you like an even faster tempo this helps you'd obviously want to you know bring that motion down to a very minimal level but and you're feeling that the natural lateral motion of the hand you're feeling the activity in the fingertips but just that squid idea along with this rotational idea should help to loosen the hand. The same thing goes for the left hand. I'd rotate this way and then back down to the pinky. Rotate that way, back toward the thumb. Let's see. Yeah, F. Okay. That 
sounds a little more awkward. But, but um... I hope those little thoughts and those practices can help you loosen up your hand if you do happen to be working on this. Again, this is dedicated to Adi. So Adi, I hope this helps you and anyone else who is working on this wonderful piece. I wish you all the best for another great week of practice. I'm going to leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to help take your playing to that next level. Another one, uh, two links actually, are for my paid courses if you want to go even deeper than what this channel discusses. And then finally, a link to my kit, which contains all of this gear that I use to film these videos. And I will make sure to add this new microphone to that kit. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.